Hey there, you're listening to Yakin' with Nick. I'm Nick Hazelton, and I'm here with my good friends. Can we say your last names? Yeah. yeah. I right. think you already I, We've already, you guys have met Nash. I've already Bennett. ruined all my chances of being president. Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's done. Yeah, uh, too late. Feed. Yep. But that's August. August Bobier. August Bobier. Uh, Nash Bennett. Nash Bennett. I've been in the background of previous podcasts. Yeah. I've been in two now, right? Yeah, this is what's, your third. Yeah, what's what's who has the record for being on the podcast the most? Um, I mean, so far, yakking with Nick, you, really? um, all together in my podcasts, Brett Vinat has it, like how many six what? shows with him. All right, I'm gonna beat him out. You might be able I'm to. Gonna... Yakking with Nick is, you know, it's 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 a new thing, man. It's free flowing. You gotta become the new. Oh, it's yeah. free flowing. The, the yeah. new recurring guest. You're like, I think my most popular one. Oh yeah. Yeah, like oh yeah, up, like just most viewed, I guess. Yeah. Um, but there's Brian a Brian Sovereign was pretty close, but I think he beat him by like seven views. That was back when it was, a yeah, little bit take more. that Brian Sovereign. Sovereign, what up? <laughs> Come fight me. <laughs> he's cool. He does a tech show. He's a, he's an interesting dude. He's a like, it's like my favorite person to follow on mm-hmm. Facebook because he's he's like super like progressive anarchist okay. and he's like s- like super like sex positive. Okay. You know I mean, so he's like, constantly posting like raunchy things, but it's not like inappropriate. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like creepy and weird. It's like he's just funny, right? Yeah. And he's like poking fun at Western culture and how like nice. people are prudes and stuff. And uh, the yeah. dude is just hilarious. I like that stuff. Nah, he's he's it's really fun. But anyway, um, we're here at the American Dream Pizza. I felt like yeah. I was saying that wrong. No. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no, this is right. <laughs> yep. But we uh, we were we just decided we wanted to do a show because I, I don't know I think it's fun to just have conversations and um, yeah and we want to be them. in the wild like Pokemon yeah yeah we're up on the rooftop we, yeah we're at the uh, out. what is this place called is it called the, uh, Welcome to the Rooftop it's the rooftop, wow. rooftop. and it's uh, connected to the Crow Bar which is a bar that's like connected to American Dream yeah yeah and I'm on the wall here my first like political stunt was done just, I don't know, like 200, 300 feet that way probably. Yeah. That's to the left of us. And it doesn't matter. It's to the, Nikki, it's like to the yeah. South. Yeah. South American dream. I, uh, it's where I saw the top of Obama's head Yep. when mm-hmm. he was campaigning here. He stopped at American dream and, and ate some pizza. Yeah. And as he left, I, yeah, he and he said, it was a big deal, man. Everybody was yeah. excited. Obama came to Corvallis. Wrist picture of yeah. Nick is going to be in the show notes of the show. Obama, rest in oh, peace. Oh, no. I was like, how do I get that? <laughs> I wonder if I could con- con- uh, contact the uh, Gazette Times and they'll give it to me. You think they would? They would, they would they probably give it. that to you. I'd be like, this was from eight years ago. Yeah. Please They've got that. all that stuff probably even wow. in storage. Yeah, I'm sure all three of us have been in the Gazette Times at some point. Oh, I've been in a few times oh, because sure. of school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our yeah. school gets taken pictures of all the time because it's a really weird school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and there's like, like hardly anybody there, so everybody's in, in picture. Yeah. It's like when they go... <laughs> Look at these poor kids. Like, we're, like we're, the, uh, we're the equivalent of when they go to... They do, like, that um, gorilla documentary of... Uh, Amish people, yeah, we're the equivalent of that. They're like, look how these. Places we're gonna live. go into the rural Kings Valley to see what happens when weird kids go to school with weird people. <laughs> yeah. Weird people. <laughs> Shout yeah, out to Kings, Kings Valley Charter School. Yeah, Eagles represent. What up? You? Do you guys still go there? I feel like every yeah. nobody, nobody that I talk to that used to go there goes there anymore. Me and then August are like They're the like, only ones. I do. This is crazy. <laughs> I mean, basically, if Nash leaves, I I, I can't be there anymore like what are you gonna do yeah i'll just die yeah so it's, it's kind like of... us and david man wow and other people well, i guess live in drew I mean, really there. live yeah. in drew is still there but they're only i'm talking in our but like, one more year wow yeah you guys oh, have wow. two more but yeah. we're gonna get uh fresh meat so that's true yeah that's true more people leave more people come mm-hmm. yeah all the people at our school wow. are like way too used to my weirdness and i'm and it's doesn't oh. it's like not as good anymore so it's... now i can like be weird to new people that's fun. Yeah. It's really just because I can't be like I, I still be weird to everybody, but yeah, it's not as fun, and if people well, don't yeah. like, expect it. Because like, if I walk up to people and I just like, you know, walk weird and say weird things to them, they're yeah. like, "Oh, hey, Nash, you know, just it's like, not what's like what's going on. What's it's up with like, this man? Uh, who are you, dude? Yeah, like, why are you doing that? Yeah, yeah, I understand that feeling. I gotta put a disclaimer on this podcast. We're some dirty Gen Zers, so we're gonna be saying lots of uh, things like uh. And, um, so be prepared for that. And if you can't handle that, 
too bad. <laughs> Shout out to Nick's grandpa. <laughs> Counting how many times I said like in, in the last episode that I was on. <laughs> yeah, grandpa, you're old. You don't you know how the kids speak. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Old people have a thing about kids speak, but like I, I don't know. It's a thing. Is I'm not I'm not making the podcast for old people. You so what's up with old people? Am I right? <laughs> it's like, come on. Yeah, it's like get younger. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Like, Bad Jerry Seinfeld jokes. <laughs> so what's the deal with old people? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you that's know, just... that's just the thing, man. Uh, our generation, we have a, we we're all about freedom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're just talking about that. <laughs> great, great transition, dude. Ash. I didn't know your guy. I was like, I forgot about. That. I was like wondering how we were, where we were going, and he brought it back. Ash yeah. told us he had a way, and he did it. Hey man, is that he did was that your way? Yeah, that was was that the way? Was that planned? Was that no? I was. Planned? I thought you oh. wanted to talk about young yeah. people being free. But what, yeah, you had like a point you wanted. But to I, make. no, that was that was great. No, no, that was yeah. the key. No, you had was that the point? That, that was that was the segue in yeah. talking about okay. freedom. Same. Yeah, yeah. Not, not to a... my idea. Okay, what's your idea? I'll talk about my idea after we talk about freedom. freedom. Okay, all right. Teenagers. But I just wanted. Yeah. That's like bad <laughs> podcast and a call out segues, but that was a yeah. good one. Okay, hey, man. <laughs> and I didn't realize it. All right. Well, yeah, we were talking about, like, how young people our age, typically millennials, seem to be just, like, really, I don't know if it's Into independent. personal but, freedom. Yeah, like, we want to do what we want to do. It's not necessarily, yeah. it's not necessarily about, like, having the career. Yeah. Like, uh, I feel like our parents would have been more driven like that. It's not about tradition. It's more yeah. about innovation. Yeah. Ex- excuse me for not knowing which one, but it was Hank Green or John Green. Gang Green. Yeah, he uh, Green eggs and he hair. uploaded a video recently <laughs> and called us. It was like the ten o nineteen, the one o nineteen generation, because that's the tax file you like the the tax form you fill out if you're an independent contractor. Mm. Because so many people in our generation are just like side hustlers. They've got yeah. they're selling their clothes on on Depop. They're doing stuff, stuff on Etsy. Etsy. Yeah. They're podcasters they're podcasters yeah, they're trying doing... to do youtube they fan art on patreon like everyone's making their money in more than yeah. one way yeah and it's no longer people relying on the big businesses for money yeah and a lot of people our generation uh it's kind of there's a downside to it obviously but are kind of distrustful in the government which that can lead to poor voter turnout which is bad but it's good that people are kind of not blindly trusting the political system too yeah i think you're yeah i think you're exactly right the economy's changing the internet has made things i mean amazingly easier yeah. right like that's insane like even i don't know yeah. Yeah, 20 years can, ago that was not possible anything. to do that well it's kind of like easy it's kind of like oh, i hate myself for saying like that much <laughs> uh, <laughs> stop thinking about it a long time ago food sucked because they people didn't have salt or pepper. Okay. Yeah, and like yeah. <laughs> it took a moment to get there. <laughs> but there was that was a whole thing of this these new things being available to people. There was a time in history where suddenly seasoning and weird exotic foods and silk were suddenly available to everyone. And now we're going into a new thing of this where information is available to everyone. Yeah. A couple decades ago, there was like class divides based off of intellect and now Anyone can become a genius because you. Everyone has Wik- Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah you, you just learn the world. Yeah, you don't need a, to go to university or, or find the right teacher. I mean, you, I mean, sort of. You find it, but you get you find it on the internet. It's just so much easier. Yeah, yeah. the wealth of information and, and the way we communicate now is totally different. So it gives everybody. It's kind of it's sort of a decentralized position of power, right? Of 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 the ability to communicate, you know, and to to give information. That's what the internet's done. So it it just makes it easier to do whatever you want to do because you can find the people who are doing it. You don't have to travel and become a like join a guild. Yeah. You find the people who are talking about it on Facebook groups or on YouTube, and you like, yeah. and then you learn. Like yeah. that's it's amazing. I mean, a couple a couple in the 1960s or whatever. If you wanted to do juggling for a living, you'd have to find a circus. But now you can just start uploading juggling tutorials to or something to YouTube and. If you're charismatic enough, yeah. you can make a living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's such a huge community of jugglers on YouTube. I know, do you? Really? Yeah. No. no. <laughs> I mean, I, there probably is. 
But we don't know. Yeah, we're not we into juggling. Yeah. Have you guys seen toy review videos on YouTube? <laughs> uh, I've heard those things are like the worst. They're well, like the little kids that yeah, are like, they like sh- unboxing toys. There, there's a there's a <laughs> channel that's got it's a six year old. It's like it's like what? the sec it's like the second it's, it's, it's these parents who like it's for the six year old and they save all the money for his retirement fund or whatever. But he gets twenty million views a video or whatever. Yeah. And it's just. That's that insane. kid's going to be rich well, for the, the number playing two, with toys. The number two YouTuber is a toy channel. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. The guy that's wow. right under PewDiePie. He wow. might have, he might be bigger than PewDiePie. I don't know. I, like, part of it's interesting because I think, like, I don't think consumerism is ending. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But, like, I don't really, I don't know. That's one thing I care about. Like, why are we buying toys? It's like, oh. Yeah. But at the same time... Like people can use their money however they want, and it's to like find joy yeah. in life, right? Well, I mean, so I, like, I don't want to judge I, I, I that. Like, I just like things, you know. Like yeah. I like to collect right. stuff, and, and I, I like my stuff, but like yeah. it's just different I think stuff. You're I think like, minimalist. Like, yeah. yeah, I I'm I'm I want to be a minimalist. I'm working towards it. That's where I'm at too. Yeah. It's like there's it's like there's stuff that I like, but I'm like I really don't actually need this. Yeah, like I've got some figurines on my thing that Nash has a ton of, and I have some, mm-hmm. and I and. When I move out of my house, I'm going to give them all to you, Nash. Really? I'm 100% uh, I, serious. I, I, dude, well, honestly, you really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, dude, I'm down with that. Uh, but honestly, like, if you just look at my bag, like, I know the listeners can't see this, but I just oh, got, yeah. like, pins and oh, stuff. you got a like, hard box from, from Yeah, Hawaii. dude, I got this in Hawaii. Yeah. And then, I, like, I have this Bigfoot pin that I just bought at the Redwood Forest. Oh, sweet. Uh, a couple weeks ago. And it was like, I, what, this doesn't give any value to me except the fact that I think it looks cool and it, it yeah, I like Bigfoot yeah. and it's a Bigfoot. And that's what matters. The problem with a lot of people's perception of minimalism is that it's, uh, you can't have anything fun. Like they're like, yeah. oh, you have a white room with a white. Minimalism is have only what you want. If you love pins, have all the pins in the world, but then don't have a ton of clothes if you don't want that. Like minimalism yeah. is only having what you deem important. If something's in your life and it's not important, you can take it out. That doesn't mean you have to live with two things. You can have a lot of things, but just make sure that all the things you have are important to you. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like I think, like my my dad and I get in this argument once in a while about tattoos. Like I want tattoos because yeah, I yeah. think they're cool. Looking. Me too. Yeah. It's like my dad's like, nah, it's just vanity. You know? I mean, like, yeah, it is yeah, just vanity. Yeah. yeah, like I just like, nothing it's wrong fun. With vanity. Yeah. I mean, I want like all the tattoos I think are really cool are stuff of pizza or just <laughs> cool stuff or weird visuals. Yeah, it doesn't have to mean anything. Yeah. Like, well, because I, you know, it. First of all, you know, if you want to look like how you want, it's a good. It's good for your morale. And yeah. Your, and your confidence and also you know it's p- humans are all different and we each have our own special molds of our minds and so we we want to express ourselves and you know vanity is a way to express yeah. yourself you know if you and, like to wear skinny jeans and we, yeah. wear and why limit the human experience like exactly yeah. one thing i want to do not many places can do are doing it yet but it's going to become a thing i watched a video where this guy went to sweden where there's like a really famous body mod place and they put a microchip in the kind of skin webbing between his pointer finger and his thumb yeah and it they hooked it up with his with his venmo account so he could wave his hand over what? apple pay stuff like that like those um wireless payment yeah. things and built in things and you could just wave your hand that's like total recall yeah where he has a phone in his hand and he just dude and yeah i a- and i do believe there's an extent where that stuff can go too far and you're sure kind of loop, cause i don't think i don't think our brains will be able to handle not having human well, senses like if you put a brain in a machine it wouldn't work i don't think yeah people think oh you can just control the limbs but our brain is built for the limbs we have yeah we're pretty into yeah. it. but if you it's add some stuff machine. onto it it can work yeah i think like it, i don't know like it just seems like yeah. body modification will go that way and and we'll learn as we learn more about the human body as we learn more we'll or come up with some crazy things it'll be cool yeah and it may not work like i don't know right away because there's you know the electrical impulses on the nerves you know whatever that is um you gotta find a way to connect those nerves to to your robot hand right well yeah but when they figured it out i mean or it's when like, they figured i don't know yeah don't well there's know. that guy who is, have you seen the guy who is colorblind i'm looking up his name right now yeah, there uh, it is uh, uh neil, neil 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 harbison harbison he's got a couple different ted talks yeah he's yeah? um he's got a he's colorblind but he has this thing that's actually what it's, imp- it's implanted this in the back of his skull. Tentacle thing. 
that's implanted into his brain, and it sticks out of his face and hangs right in front of his forehead. And, and it, picks up. it picks up colors. It can read yeah. colors, but it has a specific sound that it makes him yeah. hear. And so he and knows. So like he would look at my yellow water bottle and hear, and a, it, tone. And hear a specific sound that means yeah. yellow. And this guy was totally Whoa. colorblind. Like he only sees in, col- in a grayscale. Like and, wow. and when he first did it, he only did it with colors. But as he kept going, the people he worked with, like scientists, obviously, yes. he didn't just do that himself. Um, they, we, they started introducing more things. So now he also sees like radio waves yeah he and my color. goodness he like, and, well, he and hears colors that we don't and infrared and, and all those different on all those different waves too and he said like the loudest place is the cereal aisle yeah in grocery stores because there's so much just weird uh, colors and stuff. Uh, it just sounds like beep, boop, beep, and boop, he's beep, now beep. and he's like an artist where he uh he'll listen to songs and paint what he sees when he it's it's kind of like that's manufactured syn- synesthesia is that how yeah. you pronounce it no yeah you, the wind Sorry, bro. Yeah. Hey, I was going to suggest that that's, just, that place is shady now. You guys want to move over there? Is yeah. There? Like, yeah. Can we, is this yeah, going to be like game. ruin our just, microphone? You, okay. No, no, no. It'll okay. be a little Next. bit. Sorry, audience. You guys just have to deal for a second. We're on the move. We're on the field trip. I might moving. Oh, are we switching seating arrangement too? I don't know. No, that's too crazy. Yeah, that's you switch like, yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's like one also because there's more shade on this side, so it's way, people. I have a, a new view. Oh, I just pressed something. It didn't matter. What? what? No, it's good. It's good. Oh, that's what we got all, what we do, gentlemen? A podcast. Yeah, podcast. Want to? You want to? Everything you want to shout out? Oh shit! I don't know. <laughs> You're on yakking with Nick. I'm probably when I come up next time when you guys are actually. Talking and stuff. Are you guys gonna just eat and talking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. Dude. That's awesome. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Shout it out to American Dream and oh, stuff sweet. in the bar. So what uh what channel are you guys on? Um, uh, is Jackin with Nick. If Jackin you look Yakin, Y A K K I N. What uh where can I find that? On like, iTunes, Stitcher, tune in. Oh sweet. Like pretty much yeah. any yeah, podcast. If you, Google, app. If you use Google Yakin with Nick podcast, it'll probably come up. We're just oh, yeah. some weird Fine kids mind. that make weird content. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. I'm off okay. in like five minutes, so I'll probably I'll probably just okay. listen to you guys. Cool. <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, that's cool. All right. That's cool. <laughs> Right. Is it still going? Yes, yeah, so it's still going. Right. Okay. So we just yeah, moved tables. Like... We just got our pizza. I don't know how we're going to eat this out without like a... There's, there's plates there. over there, but I mean like we're going to be like... We're going to have eating mouth where it's like... Just eat away from the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this we'll like AS- take turns ASMR. talking. What is this? Yeah. I don't know what kind uh, of alien food that is. That's artichoke hearts. I know. How how like much money could I give you to eat one of those sausages? You you only have, you only have three dollars. No, I'm not going to give you. Them. I was just asking. I don't know. Thanks, baby doll. It depends on how. I won't give you a starting number. You'd have to give me a starting number. Fifty cents. No. Give really? me. A, I'd say like. Are you just doing it for the money, or are you like actually just, this is just, actually how much it more. would take you? To actually, do it? like I'd say like if you said like hey, I'll give you like. Three bucks. Like if you had, really? like like something that I could. If you gave me enough money where I could actually buy something with it, then I would eat the sausage. We're discussing how oh how much money it would take August to eat. So. He's vegetarian. Yeah. So what are you guys talking about? <laughs> I tried duck recently. Yeah, yeah. Well, tried it, was, it was uh, gross. You tried yak? duck is not the best. No, it was so chewy because it was dry. like it was like takeout from like a Chinese place. Oh. It wasn't good. Yeah, but sometimes if you yeah. if people know how to cook duck, it's yeah. good. But, but Nick's yak was delicious. Yeah, man. <laughs> Even the vegetarians like it. Well, it's interesting because it's like there's weird things about like nutrition and stuff. Like if you think about the animals that I don't know where they get their meat at, but um, like they get the most they, meat they, that they, got, eat, they use good ingredients here. Cool. But like it's not these are totally weird animals. This is not what human beings have like adapted to eat. Like yeah. even like beef cattle, they're so like dumbed down and domesticated. They're just yeah. not that great of an animal anymore. Like you set them out in the wild, they'll probably die uh, off. Yeah. Because you know, everything will pick them off. It's I don't yeah. know. But the well, yaks but the yaks are totally different because they eat like a totally natural yeah. diet and they're still kinda wild. Yeah. So I, I have a theory, uh, like a thing uh, it's not even a theory. I don't like to use that word. But like I wonder if if that makes a difference about mm-hmm. like how the animals like kind of the genetics of it and if that makes a difference of how well it's easily digested like and yeah. and just kind of how it meshes with your body 
like that's yeah, it just it's more. Maybe, no, I, 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 you I get know what I mean, like yeah. it's just kind of like theoretically based on what we've you know eaten in the past. It's one of those things that sounds really stupid now, but thirty years from now they'll. That's right. They'll in the New York Science Journal or whatever. Yaks, the perfect food for humans. Yeah. Yeah. Someday. What were we on before we uh, did the great table move of 2017? Wow. Wow. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about millennials and freedom. And- we were talking about uh, cyborg. Technology. Oh yeah, Just how you can like Cybernetic. senses and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to go but, with like, that. I mean, I guess let's go back. Because that was, I think, the side point. Yeah. Um, Bush did nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody on my podcast is gonna be mad about that. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah! I was like, hell yeah, bro! Nick's finally coming around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do they ever talk about nine eleven truth? I don't know anything about about conspiracy theories. Me neither. Dude, I know all about conspiracy theories. I used to be deep into it. I, I'm so... And I do know conspiracy theories. theorists, so I, I shouldn't say I don't know anything, but... Yeah. Dude, do you need to introduce me to your conspiracy theories? How good is this? How, you know my, do you know Richard Grove? Uh-uh. Oh. Shout out to Richard Grove. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but... <laughs> I don't know. He helps me with business and stuff. I, want, I haven't asked him if I could say that. I've asked other people on my, in this... Uh, it's a secret. It's a secret thing. Okay. How good is this but pizza, Richard though? It's a cool dude. This pizza is awesome. I know, dude. Delicious. It's my favorite pizza. But my dude, Richard Grove, he's made uh, he makes this sh- show called Tragedy and Hope, and then um, the Peace Revolution Dramatic. podcast. Yeah, he does a lot of a lot of online stuff. He's really involved in the libertarian anarchist spheres. There's a lot of stuff. He's an interesting guy. But um, yeah, he does this show and he 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 goes deep into stuff. Like he was uh, he if I remember his story, he worked um, for a company and he was. Sell, he was a salesman for this software and he was selling this software to people and he saw a flaw in the software. It's like you guys are, are clearly scheming the people you're selling the software to and so he, he was like, I'm meeting with them. It's like, you can't do that or uh, you, like either stop or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you out. Like I'm going to be a whistleblower. Oh, so, right. And he was meeting with those guys in one of the towers um, on 9-11 but he got stuck in traffic or something like that. I swear that's what it's scary. I hope that's his story because if it isn't then I look like an ass because it's a long time ago when I... I first got into Rich's stuff, but wow. um, well. So anyway, he he. I don't know what his position is on nine eleven, but you know he points out some of the interesting stuff in the stories mm-hmm. that you hear. But, yeah, I've thought. Of, I mean, I, I mean, I've thought about doing a n- conspiracy theory podcast or something like that. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. Get Brady to do it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Me and Brady have said really deep talks about interdimensional travel and oh quantum goodness. computers. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Because Brady took philosophy class with me. Oh, my goodness. And he just got so, like... Brady was like, deep, man. Yeah, yeah, I was like, whoa. It's like, you've seen things. But if you don't know Brady, you think he's talking really stupid because he doesn't... It's, he doesn't... I, well, no, if it's like, Brady, if you hear this, you, you're not very good at expressing... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you use words that don't make sense, so you have to, like, really know you. But yeah. if you really know Brady, you're like, wow, this guy is no, he's thinking he's weird stuff. Think, I think the way that he acts is how he expresses himself. Like, Right. Brady's a method actor. He just, like, one of those dudes. <laughs> he's this, yeah. He just becomes this, this Brady character. Yeah, no, um, I saw him earlier today. Shout out to Brady. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I saw him earlier. <laughs> 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 but it's true. Like, I think that's, that's one of those things is... I don't know. He's he's a very deep person. He, that's why I like him is he thinks about some of the craziest shit. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he's interested in interesting things. Sure. But it's, sometimes it's hard because it's like, what are you saying? What are you even talking about? <laughs> I don't understand them. <laughs> <clears throat> but as you get better. Anyway. Yeah. But I kind of wanted to say, that kind of brings me up an idea in my mind. Excuse me. About kind of like why I like, like you guys. I wanted to do a show with you guys. We we're going to like do a, like a thing in the park and like, See if we can get other people, but this was a good idea. I think it was just fine. The food is awesome. But anyway, like we were talking about with like, millennials and freedom. Like I see you two as like as good examples of somebody who's or people that are kind of finding your creative outlets and being more creative. And like, can I? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but like your spam accounts. Oh yeah. Can I mention that? Like I won't say anything. All right, sure. All right, your spam accounts. Like it's just interesting to hear you guys like express your emotions and, oh. and much more of a, and a. It's just so much more expressive than like anybody like 
when I was I forgot my uh, I forgot my uh, password on my spam, spam oh, account, so I can't oh, no. use it until I like send Instagram a picture of me with my piece of paper that says my username. Wow. So I'm totally lazy on it, but for people who don't know, on Instagram, there's kind of becoming a culture among teenagers of having different accounts and uh, having basically different levels of access to your personal psyche. And there's like, there's like your public account, which is where, where you post like yeah. stuff for everybody to see. There's your spam account where you bring out your feelings. And then there's what's called a Sinsta where you post like actually really bad stuff that like is illegal and stuff. Yeah. Well, but but there's also – but there's kind of – Guys go to spam. Yeah. There's kind of, So yeah. there's – Public, like Nash said, and spam, but spam doesn't always mean emotion. Sometimes people, I know people who have spam account that's just for every po- picture they post on their main account, they'll post ten pictures on their spam account. Yeah. But they're still they're still public accounts that kind anyone like can a follow. Photo dump. Yeah, like a photo dump. Yeah. And then there's kind of emotional ones, which also are usually called spam. And then there's Sinsta, which is like either people like bikini, like nude pics or scantily clad pics, or sure. where you want to. Uh, post that sick bong rip, bro, or uh, whatever like that. Okay. No, I think it's really interesting. It's it's a cool thing because it's... It just seems like it's so different. Like, I don't know. I've tried to do it a little bit more just because for whatever reason I've been interested in in being in touch with emotions and knowing, you know, how how do I deal with myself, right? Um, Like, I try to bring that... I try to introduce that into more of my conversations, but like... It's just like it's not even. I don't feel like I'm doing anything yeah. to really bring it out like anymore. Yeah. Like I feel like I used to kind of like try and prod at people, and it's like you know some people still. But a lot, it seems just like just more recently, like people are just more honest about how they yeah. feel and, and like what they want to do. Well, and I really like that, yeah. and I feel like that's unique to our like our culture. Yeah. The, the, the reason I made a spam account to talk about my emotions or whatever is. I don't I never wanted to send to people like hey can I talk to you about something like I feel like that's so weird to be you're basically forcing somebody into this potentially awkward interaction uh-huh. you're saying hey person you can be you might be working on your homework or whatever but drop everything and talk to me right now but on spam accounts you can just say I'm feeling really sad about x or whatever and then everyone that you've decided that you trust enough with your emotions any one of them can choose to interact. So it's there's a separation that gives both po- members in the interaction safety and options. And you don't feel like you're just dumping it on somebody without an ability for them to not do that. Mm-hmm. Which is a really hard thing when you're when you're dealing with a lot of stuff, especially as a kid. You don't feel like you can reach out to people. Like mm-hmm. that's that was a big thing when I was dealing with depression was... I didn't want to reach out because I didn't want to bother people, you know, and and that I thought that was really cool, and I kind of wish I, you know, I, I had done that mm-hmm. um, when I was younger. But I think that's I don't know. That's just one example of of that more personal freedom, like looking for a way to express yourself. Like I feel like that is a lot of what like, we're doing. I mean, I'm nowhere near as much of a content creator as either of you guys are i it's not something i want to put the grind into but i still like i'm super fascinated by it and like the art of different things and i mean i guess my own content that i create in a way is food because i really put a lot of effort into that and share it with people because that's what i like and then especially it's even it's a it's kind of more intimate version of content for the masses because i make it and I love making food the most when it's for people, when I can cook for others. It's I'm putting my creative energy into this and then people are enjoying it. And that's kind of the same thing you do with your podcasts and Nash does with his art or his uh, music or anything like that. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. speaking of content creators. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> No, I'm just going to give a shameless plug right here. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, I mean, I kind of am. So, I love to come on Nick's podcast and talk about ideas I have. And most of them don't ever flesh out. And are uh, hashtag stupid. Yeah. Whoa, wow. So, basically. Get wrecked, Nash. Basically, because like every, every, pretty much every idea that I've ever talked about on Nick's podcast kind of like didn't turn out the way it was. Really? And like, what do you mean? Like, what? Well... 
I give way too specific ideas of like what I'm working on. Like yeah, dude, you can't okay. hold your secrets in. But yeah, well, because like last time I talked about the next album project I'm working on. Uh huh. And I gave every specific detail about the concept and stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. Concept is in the trash. I mean, I'm still working on an album, and a lot of the songs uh-huh. I was going to use on that album are still uh-huh. on this. No. Different name, different concept, idea, like yeah, totally true. different, but. It's your it's your Achilles heel as an artist. Most artists, like, I mean, I bet most artists starting out do the same thing, and then I, they get, like, bought by a brand, and they're like, shut up, don't talk about your work until it's out. Yeah. But, like, that's just the same thing with movies, where it sucks when movies have trailers put out for, like, two years before they come out. Dude, there's no reason to put out a trailer before the month or two before the movies. Yeah. And that's what a lot of artists kind of do once they become big, is they learn... I shouldn't talk about this at all until yeah. it's done and I can put it out. Yeah. That's something I've learned with podcasts. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this person on or blah, blah, blah. Like, I'm going to start up podcasting again. And with, you know, that's that's how Yakin' with Nick came a thing. Is mm-hmm. like, well, I'm throw the concept of and Yak in the trash. You know, and anyway. But, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting thing because you, like, have this idea of what you want to do. But maybe because you, you're new at it, you haven't really figured out, like, what can I do yet? Or, right. Or, and... I don't know. Part of it is, I don't know, you're just going to figure it out, right? Because yeah. you do it more, you figure out what, what is the timing. A lot of it's that I change my mind a lot. Um, but I want to talk about, I already talked to August about this, but I want to talk about a new idea. And this might even involve you. Mm. All right. So look, I was talking to a friend of mine about an idea for a YouTube show, right? where we'd go around and we try different kinds of, uh, like, boba drinks and stuff, just because it's a super niche culture of, of drinks. And we'd go around and, you know, in the in the area and try to find, like, the best drinks, right? You know, just kind of small, like, random adventure uh, series, right? And I, I, was, I was talking to him, and I was like, hey, I was like, either we could put this on one of our personal channels yeah. or or something because I was like, I don't think that this is... It's a small idea that probably wouldn't work on... to make its own channel, right? Where all we post is this Boba adventure. Yeah. So then that got me thinking. It would be... I think it would be really cool to do a channel that is kind of a community channel where anybody yeah. can kind of post whatever they want, but mm-hmm. I kind of curate it. Yeah. Where... You know, if anybody has kind of a small, specific web series idea that would just that's kind of doesn't wouldn't constitute for its own channel, can go post their videos on there, and if it grows and gets big to where it could constitute its own channel, you know, it could break off. It'd be kind of like an SNL of YouTube series. Uh, A a good channel that is kind of similar but not exactly is Soul Pancake, which is Soul Pancake. I've heard of that. I swear I've heard of that. You've heard of really uh, cool, like Kid President. Gosh, that, that sounds familiar, but it's no. a kid with a uh, like brittle bones disease who like wants to be president. Oh no, I no, I haven't seen. <laughs> you probably, that. I, I, I would bet if you watch YouTube, you you've probably seen a soul pancake video. Yeah, because most of their videos are are uploaded by a bunch of different yeah. people. Yeah, and I'm also pretty right. sure it's founded by some like Baha'i people because oh, I yeah. think we have uh, we have friends. I'm not going to shout them out because they might not want to but we have friends who are Baha'i and I shared a video on Facebook from them and she's like oh my god you know Soul Pancake I met the person that started it or whatever wow. at a Baha'i thing <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Baha'is are interesting they're Sorry. like Wiccans I think they're taking over the world oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> 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 just a joke I heard the funniest thing I used to listen to talk radio all the time and uh, people like there's a show where people would, could call in any time and some people would say the wackiest shit. And so one time somebody was calling in. I think this was actually, well, I shouldn't say, you guys know who I was dating. It was a Wiccan, but back then. And so I was learning about um, Wiccan. Yeah, I don't want to say anybody's yeah. name. Um, but I thought it was hilarious. Like the, this lady was talking about how uh, how Nancy Pelosi and uh, like John McCain are secret Wiccans. And they're like taking over the government. <laughs> it's like what dude I wish <laughs> Wiccans are really cool in my yeah, experience it's super interesting <laughs> um yeah I um I, but back on this like channel idea thing you know I was thinking I was like August I was like you should start a cooking show called August Cooking Corner 
And, like, Nick, you could do some sort of, like, spin-off talk show about, you know, maybe it could be the revival of, of, An- of Anyak, where, like, oh, you, that'd be so you niche. talk about your politics. Like, because that's oh, the thing. that'd be fun. It would be, it, it's, it'd be, all the shows would be very niche things. Okay. Right? Like, like Boba Buddies, and but it just, it, it'd be all in one place. Yeah. So you could find all your little niches in, like, one spot, and I don't know. I guess think it'd be kind of... I think that's awesome. I like the idea, and I've thought about that. Like, with Yak and with Nick, I sometimes I'll tell people, like, hey, if you want to do something, you know, and you don't really want to, like, you do Make put the effort thing. in, because, like, to put the effort into, like, building something is kind of, yeah. like, if you want to do a podcast, you got to you gotta pay money. Like, you, right. I mean, you can do it for free, but you, you're you going to suck. Right. Yeah. Uh, like, actually, maybe not. You can do, so, anyway, anyway but, but you can do it. But, yeah. um, but not everybody wants to do that, and if you want to try it, like, I try to, like, that's one of those things I'd love to see more people do. Right. And I don't really want to be that curator, but I like I just want to throw it off and say, hey, if you if want you, to post something, yeah. I'll like because it benefits me. Right. Any more content that I get means I get more views, and at this point, I like exactly that's awesome because like the brand is already established. Yeah. But the content that you create is open. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I want. Like I'd like something similar to that, but like yeah, I don't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I want to offer that. I think that's a really cool idea because of that. Yeah. You know? So, like, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, that's just kind of a thing that I've been throwing around and talking to people about if they'd be interested in having a show on it, you know, and just start. And not, even like, because I wanted it to kind of keep it to our community. Sure. And, you know, like, do, you know, just kind of the, the, surrounding area, like physically, but just also our kind of circle of friends, yeah. too. Like, our, you know, community yeah you know yeah. but i don't know i thought that'd be something i think that would be really neat um it's just so much like we're talking about how you can you can do just about anything right yeah. and yeah. i like what i i don't know there's i got weird ideas about the economy because i'm interested in business but i feel like the people who are going to be the most successful are the people who, who are going to bring the most people in mm-hmm. and, um, I don't know, build off of that. I don't know if you can do that. If you, I don't know, this is just a, I guess a basic business principle maybe, but if you can just build off of resources yeah, and just keep building, you yeah. win. Like that's the game, right? <laughs> you just get, mm-hmm. give them, get money, get assets, whatever. Like yeah. you can do that. Well, get pretty paid, get laid, easily. Get paid. I mean, at this point, the term businessman has kind of lost its way because I don't know if businessman was ever really like a good term, but now it's kind of just people in suits who work on Wall Street or whatever. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with working on Wall Street unless sure. you're like killing people. Uh, yeah. But if you, but if businessman, I feel like especially to us in our community and kind of in a rural rural Oregon where lots of people are just doing their own thing. Yeah, businessman to us are people just doing what they want and making a living yeah that's how i feel like businessman i get it from like rap music when i think of businessman i think of somebody successful like he's a businessman yeah i don't know i feel like i hear school by q have said that like, there's some <laughs> lyric about him beating a businessman i can't remember i don't know maybe not but but that's like yeah i, I get that like that's that's it's a different stereotype now yeah well because I, I i i've really one of my big things about joining this like circle of or of of um being a person who is a creative type and growing and trying to get i i want to try to get involved in our local creative scene Mm -hmm. meet all the you know the people that are doing kind of stuff that i do and collaborate and grow through other people right yeah you know and and as i'm getting older and i'm meeting more people i'm realizing i was like wow I, i you know i have a lot of friends who are like interested in and in, in doing their own uh making their own content you know yeah. like you know you and mm-hmm. and andy and you mm-hmm. know meeting the guys in glide divine and yeah. just all these musicians and stuff you know how i, I want to i like i feel like i've always wanted to do something like a soul pancake but i have i didn't know all the people yet sure yeah. But we're all getting older and we're starting to like express ourselves and yeah and know, starting to become whenever i meet people. you people i kind of brag about all you guys in a way like it's like new york like when i I just got back from a trip to like see my east coast family and stuff east coast jews east coast jews (laughs) and this was so glad to see you this is getting so shane and put (laughs) them but uh the whole thing is 
people are like they just didn't get it. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I get to go to my friend's house and we'll drink goat milk that they <laughs> yeah. got with with cookies I make, or yeah. I'll make pasta and they'll put goat fed on it, or <laughs> like so many people we know grow some kind of food or something. And I'm at this point, it's like not weird to go over and it's, oh, you want this? Go out to the garden and pick it for dinner, yeah, and stuff like that, or people who just like do their own stuff and are just self-reliant and that's mm-hmm. such a, a foreign concept to a lot of people well, it's really oh, cool to yeah because not only introduce that to them not only are we or because i think it has a lot to do with where we live because not only are we oregonians and we're all very stereotypical or- oregonians but we're also which is already its own niche but we're even rural we're like a sub niche yeah. of like the oregon hippies mm-hmm. like it's, the ba- and not, not even not, the hippies like the backwoods hippies yeah it's it's just it's it's the it's just there's a certain type of rural Oregon where it's an amalgamation of hippies and rednecks and, yeah. where they've just combined and become mm-hmm. a new thing that just cares about personal freedom, basically. Yeah. That's a lot of it. Yeah, totally. Like I was going to like one of my favorite things somebody said recently, I think it was Ari Shafir on Joe Rogan. He said uh, talking about people like weed, like, but um he said that, that something about how Oregon people are like, whenever he goes, like, gets weed from Oregon, people are like, oh, yeah, I grew this in my backyard. Oh. This is blah, and he knows everything about it. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's so Oregon. funny. It's just, I mean, it's a different yeah. culture, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I've never really traveled. I've traveled a little bit around the States, but, like, yeah. and we had somebody come out from, you were there, from, yeah. uh, from Illinois. And uh, that was weird. Chicago. Yeah. Like, that was oh, cra- Yeah, I don't, yeah. You, I don't and know. And I know people there. from Chicago. Are you talking about the band? No. no. Oh, my you, you, no. You, you, she, he didn't meet them. No. But, uh, anyways. <laughs> and, yeah. no, but it's different, and that's, yeah. I don't know, I think it's very unique. I mean, even California and Washington, like, I've been to both of those many times, yeah. and they still have some of that same West Coast, like, just that West Coast vibe, but it's yeah. totally different. Like, California, I feel they're a lot more, they have, they're a lot more mainstream, not in a bad, yeah. bad way, but they're just more indoctrinated into... Well, that's where pop culture pop comes culture, from, yeah. right? It's a lot of the place, host, a lot of it. The home of pop culture. And then yeah. Washington, is it's, it's, it's just not the same. Like, there's something so weird about Oregon. And then that's like, it's not even like superiority. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, weird Oregon people are the best people. It's just weird yeah. Oregon people are so weird. Yeah, weird Oregon people. I was having this conversation every once in a while. I've been having this conversation more and more, it seems, that the people you find in the Oregon woods. I was talking to somebody, with, actually with Brady yesterday, about, about just, I don't know, people out in the rural areas and just some of the crazy people you meet. Like, some of them, really cool. Like, yeah, you meet me or one of these guys. It's like, oh, that's really cool. Oregon's are pretty cool. And then you meet a tweaker from Fall City who's poaching out in the fucking woods with your mushroom yeah. hunting. And, it's you know. true. Like, the people you meet here are like... <laughs> white supremacists that like are like don't on, shower and stuff on meth yeah like, yeah meth drive, addicts are making shitty pickup yeah. trucks yeah. bad moonshine yeah missing their teeth or you meet these like inbred weird nick type people who are like these artists and stuff that like grow their own everything and yeah. like are it's it's weird because it's, it's weird it's not like hippies like you'd see at like it's not like californian hippies where they're like it, it it's it's so it's hard. not like the dreadlock it's, they're not freeloaders no, oregon it's hippies not, it's not are the hippies. opposite well, of some oregon hippies some are. some <laughs> oregon hippies are freeloaders yeah. but like the cons like the stereotype for for hippies and like pop culture is just like they don't do anything but it's like it's backwoods hippies hippies are the is. like yeah. hippies are the busiest yeah. people i know i like what i like to call myself as a hill hippie or a hickey <laughs> you know like i'm a hillbilly and a hick but i'm also I'm also a hippie right well you should how about a hip cat hip cat okay. is what uh is basically what hipster and hippie came from oh, yeah yeah so in like the 1930s and like 40s i think um when jazz was a thing oh yeah hip cats were like people who were the thing oh yeah that he's mm-hmm. a hip cat yeah mm-hmm. and i think and i can't get that and then it also accent. kind of became like a like for uh it was middle class white boys who wanted to be part of the jazz culture yeah like hip, hip cats okay it's so like guys who would move away from the suburbs to new orleans to new orleans so they could be uh, in that yeah. jazz so in that culture. jazz life and then it became then like hipster and then hippie and so they both kind of have the same root and have their own purposes so i kind of like hip cat that's cool i like to bring it back cool. yeah. i like using the word cat sometimes like using, yeah oh, he's a cool cat yeah. he's a cool cat yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> but i don't know it's something that that's and it just seems unique and 
like I hate to like say this is how things are and it's you know because I don't know other places in the world I just don't know but it does seem like Oregon's that's that's our thing like that's kind of what we're known for yeah but there are but there's definitely things that I wish like there's other places I'd totally love to live for totally different reasons than why I like Oregon yeah like I would I've always dreamed of living in Italy or France for a year or, or more just to experience that ancientness and the and how everything's winding paths because america we just destroy buildings yeah yeah we just destroy our, our historic downtown yeah. luckily corvallis does not do that yeah we are looking at we some have beautiful buildings everywhere at old hotel corvallis there are uh corvallis even has laws preventing like malls yeah like it, here's the thing and anarchists like yeah. you, like I don't know. I've come a long way from being like an ANCAP, an anarcho-capitalist, and yeah. you, you, everything needs to be owned by private and the government should not own When you it. Like, first started ANYAC, you were crazy. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and one of the things I've kind of come around on and why, like, some anarchists would be like, oh, you're not an anarchist, bro. Um, is there some things, like, that I find maybe this maybe it's my aesthetics? Like, I, I like I like wilderness and I like history. And I, I am totally okay with the government protecting that. Yeah. Like, uh, cool. If you're gonna deface some fuck, like yeah. if, like say the Taliban, if there was some great giant Buddha statues on yeah. some guy's property in Alabama, and he's gonna like, oh, we're gonna tear these down, like no, those have been there for thousands of years. You yeah. can't do that. And like, I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw you in jail for that. I don't and, care. And it's worth it for there to be laws like the EPA and stuff. Like, yeah. Well, not. But, get, I don't. I don't know enough, but. But like, I'll give you a little bit. Of the the meaning, yeah, you know what I mean. Like <laughs> the stuff, what they're supposed to do. Right. Not I mean, what they always do, but stuff preventing big companies from just just like pumping out gas. And then the other thing is, if we like had a totally free market with nothing controlling it, there'd be a lot of free businesses, but there'd also be monopolies. No, 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 no. You can't have. But the only thing that a monopoly is is if you can get rid of competition in a free market. There's unlimited competition. No, right? but. Like you're not really going to get a monopoly unless you are the best. Yeah, like but you, think you about can't. TV. We we have oh, that's we, because the government subsidization yeah, and weird but, shit with the but the if we airwaves like waves and stuff. But at this point, like if we just got rid of it, there'd become one TV network. Like oh, that's interesting. Like there, there's 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 fights against it because of the internet and Hulu and Netflix yeah. and stuff. But there's like there's certain industries that would probably get like totally fucked up. If we just removed everything regarding them, uh, like every law. Yeah, I don't know about TV. I don't know about radio. There are some interesting ones. I don't know. I'm open to it. I'm not I'm not going to say like, no way we can't have laws. It's just my preference is I want to see freedom. And so when I can, right, because laws are controlling, right? Yeah, that's the idea. And sometimes you really do need control. Like that's just you got to have a nuanced point of view, I think. And I I mean, I I really wish. We could have more successful political parties to bring point of views like this because yeah. I really, I always say I'm kind of so far left that I'm half right. Yeah, that's how I used to say I'm so right that I'm far, that I'm a little bit left. Yeah, so we're, it's, 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 <laughs> anyway. the, it's the same thing yeah. where it's like you just you everyone thinks they have to fit into Democrat or Republican, mm-hmm. but neither of those things like even yeah. make sense anymore because they've flipped on so many different issues to yeah. appeal to different voter bases they that they barely disagree they barely disagree and when they do they don't fix the disagreement yeah. they just disagree yeah and it's the whole thing where if you're like a lot of republicans it's uh we want no laws limiting guns and no laws limiting this but then like we have to outlaw abortion it has to be impossible and it's like that that doesn't fit that doesn't fit with what you're saying yeah and i don't know like, <clears throat> every, like people have come at it from different principles i guess like the conservative christians are coming at it from a, a pro-life standpoint i don't know like i'm 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 gonna call myself pro-choice i don't really care what people are gonna say like yeah i don't know i just don't i don't know i think that if you are in a place where you don't think you should have a kid don't do it and yeah, maybe you you end a life, but like I th- somebody said, there's Ari Shafir on his latest uh, one of his latest specials. He said, um, um, you know, the only way you can die and go to heaven with is to be cleansed of original sin. <clears throat> and so, if you don't, if you aren't born, then you never had original sin. Wow. Mm-hmm. So technically, ab- abortion is bringing Ooh. people closer to Jesus. Wow. So it's like you should do it anyway. That's so offensive. <laughs> yeah, that's like. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with that, but that's like really like. Uh, no, yeah, I, don't really, like, I just want to make the yeah. joke. That's one of those things where you say, it and then people are just like. 
<laughs> and you're, it's not like they're so angry they can't know, even just talk so back shocked. to you. Shocked. But no, what I like, I don't know. It's that's my point of view. Is yeah. if if you are not in a point, a place that you should have a kid, yeah, don't do it. Don't have a kid live a shitty life because oh, yeah. I shouldn't. You know, but it's like, blah, 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 but then it's also them. the the whole accidental pre- pregnancy thing. It's like, yeah, like sixteen year olds are gonna get it on and like. And every once in a while, those condoms are going to break. Yeah, so just... And yeah. sometimes they're just not going to wear them. What the heck? Because <laughs> <laughs> kids are stupid. I don't know. Yeah, and I don't think a life should be ruined over that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm going to value, like, a born person more than an unborn But maybe person. we should uh, stray off of the very... Yeah, this is like... The Uber This con- is the worst. Yeah, we're like... Why did we do this? I don't know, dude. So we I YouTube, did am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, think I the, love the, original, the Disney Channel. Like, where we came from was this kind of mix, right? And, like, the kind of... The culture we were talking about, like, yeah, about laws. But that was where we... Okay, that's where we came from. I don't remember yeah. exactly... Where, I gotta follow the lines of the conversation. But, um... I don't know. It's... I think that a lot of people value the same sort of things... It, that we're talking about like the farmers markets yeah i don't know like and so many people are starting these side hustles that mm-hmm. like more people are into it like entrepreneurship is becoming super yeah. popular yeah like i mean so many podcasts yeah. like you look up entrepreneur on itunes uh-huh. you're gonna find thousands like hundreds of podcasts that are gonna give you like really good advice about you know being well, an entrepreneur I, I i had a moment a couple months ago that was almost um I don't not prolific. What's a good what's a good word for profound? Profound. <laughs> Nick's going to fill up both of our waters. Water now. I'm good. Uh, we're gonna actually just pause. Okay. Just well, make up, make up. I'm gonna go to the bathroom too, so I just wanted to remind everybody to uh, go check out my SoundCloud and uh, you get like just go on there and retweet my album, my EP, Psychic Prelude. It's uh, an album about how it's like, what it's like to have anxiety and extreme paranoia in your life. Uh... Alrighty, we're back. That was our water and and uh, water and pee break. Yeah. The in and out, you know, of the liquid. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so I had a profound moment that I was saying. I was shopping at a local grocery store called the First Alternative Co-op. Oh, yeah. Which is a co-op cooperative where it, they have a board, an elected board, and yeah. I I'm a member there, so I oh. now I now own like a tiny bit of sure. thing I guess but it's like you have an owner appreciation where you can get discounts and sure. there's all sorts of stuff like that but you pay into it and there's advantages and stuff but it's a grocery store and I was there in the produce section and it was the same produce at the Saturday market sure, yeah. and that was just something that I found beautiful about where we live is that I can buy groceries at a store that's the same groceries I bought a week earlier at the Saturday market and it's the same people and they have photos of the farmers and it's it's a it's super high quality stuff so there's a, there's a price gouging aspect of it and yeah. I know like people like Mr. Andrews like he kind of yeah there's some people who some are people who are hippie things like we are there's some people he's from Colorado too yeah. but there's some people like, who get on it there's some people who just don't <laughs> want to spend money for quality like that's yeah that's, that's why mcdonald's is successful is because right. sometimes people don't care about successful f- about quality food but i'm kind of the ultimate person who cares about good food nash was showing us something uh, <laughs> funny <laughs> but it's it's a it's something amazing that i can go to a grocery store and get the same produce and then not only that but i know the farmers i yeah. know these people personally like i'm f- I had play dates as kids with the children of these people and I'm buying produce from them. And it's just a true community more than most places can say they are. Yeah. I think it's unique being like you're involved with uh, some of the farmers uh, pe- market people, like being involved in agriculture in the food production, man, what a, what a community too. Like yeah. being at the Corvallis farmers market is so fun. And I, and I don't, grow food but i i work at a food booth and yeah. it's amazing and we do trades with other booths like we'll yeah. we give them uh that dude ken we, shout out to ken who's always wearing his jill stein and uh, uh yeah baraka that's all i yeah. know i don't know okay i i know but him yeah, yeah. yeah i sure you do he, <laughs> yeah. he, 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 like he, uh, friends one of, of the dad. reasons that yeah. yeah august is kind of a big deal is his his mom and dad are pretty like big in the uh okay that's a big of, deal yeah 
Yeah. Kinda. I mean, so my Bobby's dad. Dad is famous as heck. My dad is Blair yeah. Bo- Google Bar- Blair, Blair Bobeer, Bobeer, attorney at law. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a cool, dude. He's he's got so many pictures on Google. <laughs> he's a he's a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. He's he's a he's a member he's, of the Green Party, and he, he cares a lot he about knows, he politics knows and stuff. Chris Novoselic from Nirvana. Not wow. Yeah, did I tell did you? Did you know that the Freedom Fiends interviewed Chris Novoselic? No way. So, so I have like so, a kind of connection. Yeah, to you. I never this, got to this, talk this, about this, 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 this might like I was on, but I'll silly. have to like ask my dad that it's okay that like I'm talking about this, but um. <laughs> Yeah, he he kind of knows Chris Novoselic because after Nirvana, he's gotten a lot into like I, I'm sure you know because the Freedom Fiends, but he's done a lot of activism and stuff like that. Yeah, and he's from the Pacific Northwest, so yeah, and Seattle, they know each yeah, other from yeah. things. And they were at like a thing or something, and Chris asked my dad like, "Do uh, I'm flying to the to the Columbia, Washington by the Columbia River, and I'm gonna like." kayak there and you want to come wow and my dad had stuff he had to do so he couldn't do it but oh wow he wanted even ask my yeah the and basis for nirvana and That's so I, cool. and you could all, i'm sure my dad would be willing to for you to interview I him but do that i'd he, love to do that sometime. he interview august dad yeah dude, for, that cool. would be so sick there was a while where he would go out to the for the 2004 recount was it i don't remember where it, it was somewhere i don't remember it was that. like shit I, was it way before there, i was he he politics. like he had to do stuff like that and it was yeah. really it's cool. cool. And my dad just uh, recently, we have to, I don't know if Oregon has given us the funding yet, but he worked on a campaign to get uh, ranked choice voting passed in Benton County. I don't wow. know if you remember this, but no. it's passed. Oh, that was a whole it thing. Pass? Seriously. We got the votes. We don't know. Wow. They still have to like all- allocate us the money to do it. Yeah. But it's like passed. We got it done. And that's interesting. It's like, and now it's Benton County. There's a couple counties in California, like Santa Cruz, I think. They're and then, it. and I think like the Oscars do it. And then all of Australian parliament, that those are the places I know that use it. Wow. Yeah. The, this is a very interesting system of voting. Uh, I don't know. If, and Mr. Andrews will talk to you about it yeah. too. I think he, for some reason, I think he's got criticism of like the yeah. green party's policy, yeah. but but anyway, that was interesting we're, stuff to hear about that. But I think like we're all very involved in politics, and yeah, I mean, I'm a member of the Libertarian Party of Oregon. Yeah. Um, one of them. Do you know there are two? That's such, <laughs> such stupidity. Well, the no, okay. So the stupidest dumb. thing is what is it? It's the uh, Independent Party. Is most <laughs> yes, the Independent Party link because because because. So I don't know. Uh, for those of you who don't know, when you sign up for what party you're on. There's independent party at the top, yeah. and so many people think that means no party, <laughs> but there's the actual independent, independent party. Yeah. So there's a ton of people who are registered members of the independent party who have no idea because they thought they were like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not in a party. I don't subscribe to one ideology or whatever. Now they're part of this party that's just <laughs> full of people who thought they weren't signing up for any party. No, no, it's the funniest thing, and it's, yeah, there's controversy here over it. Um I don't know. Like they're, they seem to be kind of a uh, more progressive party. I guess yeah. that's if there you can point anything to them. But anyway, Oregon politics and stuff. It's a it's a cool place if you want to do weird politics. Yeah, like that's the Green Party is huge here. Yeah, uh, it was uh, LP is even decent it was here. Part of from the jewels. It used. To... Oh yeah, <laughs> it, people say that. Like I get confused because my uh, I. Because I just recently learned that was his name, oh. like the LP. I'm like, you Libertarian Party? <laughs> what are you talking about, Killer Mike? I thought he but was uh, a Bernie uh, <laughs> When I was a kid, we moved to Maine when I was in for the like for like six months when what? I was in I k- kindergarten. Yeah, you lived in Maine. I lived in I Maine. You lived down in San Francisco thought, yeah. when you're like older. I yeah, did that, yeah. but I lived in Maine for half a year when I was like in yeah. kindergarten on a tiny island. It's like away oh. from. Port, the Portland and Maine. Yeah. It was like a ferry ride. You could walk around the island. Like it was so small. And my dad was helping out with a campaign there. Like we moved so he could work on a campaign. Yeah. And that's like a lot of what I remember. And I've always kind of been indoctrinated, I guess, into this type of Pine politics. Grove right now. So sorry. Yeah. I, Pine Grove. <laughs> hey, check out Pine Grove on Bandcamp. Is they like somewhat? Like well, what's the deal? Oh yeah, they're that? huge. Oh, they're oh, huge. Okay. I'm yeah. like, why they, just, are they, on? they just exist on Bandcamp. Okay, okay, yeah. that's cool. Why not? I feel like, like why not? Why not? Like check them out on like yeah. they're like check them out on stuff, Spotify. Yeah. Why not to say like yeah, they're on Spotify. So why not say that? That's what because like, people have because cool he's got to promote his his own medium. Like that's that's where Nash is at. I'm not on iTunes yet. You gotta you gotta. How do you get on iTunes with music? Podcast so easy. There's an application process. Are you on RSS feed? I think. 
I'm not on Spotify. Oh. We were talking about iTunes. Oh, are we? Yeah. Did, I don't, yeah. I to, you know, I iTunes. You just have to have RSS feed. What's like on? Okay. You have to. Yeah, know, that's I, all you need for you. You for pay a, a fee. You pay a fee, and then I think they take some of your money. Yeah. But it's like I uh, it's, okay. Well, because I don't have all the copyrights to all my music either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the yeah, but how do you yeah. do that too? Like my copywriting is so easy because I, I don't do it. I, have, <laughs> I know. It's just well, Creative Commons. I, I, you know? I mean, that's me. That's what I do too. I'm supposed to have the. Uh, the rights to Psychic Prelude, but it doesn't hasn't came yet. Like I'm supposed to get papers in December, and I applied oh, in like shit February. That's why it takes so long to get yeah. fucking albums out. Well, I mean, I was like, yeah. dude, I'm not waiting till December to release this album. So yeah, I was just like Creative Commons, and then I'll by the time anyone would want to even copy me, I'll, yeah. I'll have it, I guess. But mm. whatever. Yeah, God, I'm so happy they're playing that. That was this man. <laughs> Check out Pine Grove. Yeah, but we wanted to wrap this up. We're getting yeah. we've been here for a while. It's getting up. A little bit past an hour, but well, I maybe I should have done this in the yeah. beginning of the show. I kind of introduced we could, we Nash in August. Like we, you guys know Nash, all right, to an extent. Right, and we kind of did it, but we're gonna like cut. Like this part is gonna be up until here. We'll be at the end of the podcast, but right here, I'm saying this is when we'll do the. We'll put this in front of the podcast. Edit you think next like gonna it. be that like, much editing on you? Uh, you Just might be cut like, it and move it. Is that hard? <laughs> it's not that hard, but like. I don't know if I have the time. All right, to do it, all right. I'll do it. If, if not, then I don't give a fuck. Because right. this, this question, this this questionnaire uh, portion may or may not be at the beginning of the podcast. But this is going to be Nick giving biographical information or something, getting yeah, that out I'll of explain us. It so it stuff I, like that. It. Yeah, but so I like I said earlier, I like you guys because of like I feel like you guys are very expressive, and I find that you guys are really authentic. Like I don't know, like I've been with August, and uh, I've. I've seen you and, like and heard you do things that I would really not do. Like, like what? I, like <laughs> specifically, um, remember the, 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 we we're talking about the girl from Illinois. Oh <laughs> he yeah. He went off and heard said something. Mean, anyway, it was just so funny, but it was just so unique. And I was like, "This is why I like August." Yeah. I'm hashtag raw, no filter. <laughs> no, it's great. Except I do have filters when I'm in situations where it wouldn't be good to right shout things. That's I'm, I'm I feel like I'm losing mine. Sometimes that's good. I don't know, somewhat good, but anyway, and bad. But. It's like, yeah, I'm like if we talk about this on the show too, uh, be, like authenticity and how authentic can you be before you start like damaging your reputation? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> is Kanye West the uh, ultimate version of that, where he's just like he doesn't give any fucks and he's just like just, he has no he he has he has an image, but it's like of having no image. Right, he's just, right. True. He just spat in the face of everyone. Yeah, that's that's one of those reasons I like Kanye more. I've warmed up to him a yeah, lot more, really? but actually, probably because of Nash and and, yeah. uh, and, and Josh me. and little. Uh, yeah, yes, you yeah. you played it, and that that it was last summer or something. You played Kanye West. I was listening to it was Life of Pablo, that album yeah. you were playing back then. Yeah. Even though that's not one of his better mm. albums, it's like no, his worst album. yeah, it was. But, oh, okay. but some right, of it, sure. some of it's I'm good. Really, He's, he does creative stuff, but yeah. If if you really want to appreciate Kanye West as an artist, you gotta listen to like Graduation. Listen to Graduation and Call Drop out his first albums because yeah. that's when when he first started. He was a guy who was like, "I'm gonna make it big." He had fire. In yeah. his like heart, like I'm gonna do this and succeed. And now he's like, I succeeded. What do I do now? And he's now he's just kind of like, do whatever I want. Weird, because he went cool. from easy. He went from broke kid to superstar and now yeah. that's why he's so obsessed with like being god is because that's the only thing he has like like left yeah, to do i keep improving that's one of the things i will like i love rap music because yeah. of the it's so personal yeah. like these people are rapping about their struggles that's what i mean that's what it's about like yeah. they're talking about their entrepreneurship struggles and then how they become an artist and you don't hear that from from like many rock bands no. like nirvana doesn't do that yeah. and they're good in their own way but but uh August is shaking his knee. Oh I I'm a I'm a, I didn't I'm, a know I'm a nervous person. But anyway, like I don't know. That's one of those reasons I like rap music. Yeah. But let's go back. Um so you you guys go to Kings Valley, um and I don't know, you like you guys are kinda like the like the only kids. Well, that's not true. I guess I hang out with all of you guys. Like, because we're like such a small school, everybody hung out with everybody. And since yeah. you guys were friends with my sister, yeah. I went to preschool maybe with August. No, no, no you, you been I went to preschool yeah. with your sister. That's right. Yeah. Hashtag. Wow. Talk about hippies yeah. too. We, we went to back. yeah, we went to preschool in a lady's house, and yeah. she would like make us tea, and we would 
like do crazy stuff like just weird hippie yeah, stuff. Yeah, that was before really my fun. time. Yeah, yeah, way back before Nash was around. <laughs> but where are you born, Nash? Are you native? Yeah. Okay. So, oh, yeah. I know you were family. <laughs> I yeah. forget. Like <laughs> Nash and I are related. Yeah. Nash is like third cousin once removed or something. Something like that. And it's not just you guys. It's like half of our yeah, school everywhere. is like distantly related. Yeah, and then there's Valley, me, PD, the whole little but valley. I, but then I'm totally not because my mom's from San Francisco. And my dad's from West yeah. Hempstead, New York. Like, oh wow, yeah. I'm totally not connected. You're like a native, but I know, like, I know it. Gosh, the, the real natives of Oregon, like those those people are talking about, the rural people, man. But that's ever, no more and more of those like. But that, those it's are all the so people I grew fun. up with because my parents like came out here because oh, they, yeah, yeah. they were like, I want to be in Oregon, and then they like they immediately found those people. Yeah. So I've grown up with these crazy Oregon hippies that I that's love. So awesome. And like, so there's native Hazeltons here that have been here longer than my Hazeltons. Like I'm Barnhart, oh. and so is so is Nash. Nash just got Barnhart yeah. in him. Ooh, that's where we're related. Um, yeah. Those are my, that's like my connection to the area. But Hazeltons are like from Ohio and shit. Yeah. But there's Hazeltons that have been here for a while, and they're like, like infamous. Like we every once in a while at the <laughs> farmers market, somebody be like, "Oh, do you know?" I can't remember the guy's name, but this well, how about the Gerding? guy in Blodgett? Oh yeah, Girdings are everywhere. They're everywhere. I like, live next, next to, to Girding Lane. Yeah. yeah. And, and they have, like, so airport and construction company. Like, yeah. They're like the Illuminati of, <laughs> of Corvallis and Paloma. Like, yeah, they pretty much run the whole place. Yeah. Think. Wow. They have a friend that's a guardian, too. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I don't remember where we're going. But those, uh, those, oh, they, 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 the native Hazeltons, man, when you hear yeah. about them, they're like, oh, yeah, some guy would come up to my daddy, like, oh, you know, someone's a Hazelton, and be like, no, no, I don't know. It's like, oh, well, we used to go to the bar in Philomath, and I don't know why, we just never get along. Every time I saw that guy, I would, we'd get in a fight, <laughs> yeah. fighting in the bar. That's what they did. Wow. With each other. It's like, what the yeah, <laughs> Who is this guy? This is I'm not in, my Hazelton. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, I like how we we're gonna. This was like a wrap up segment, <laughs> and then we're like going for ironic. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, Nick, you're leading this part. Yeah. What do you want to? What do you want to ask us? Like, what else do you want to get out of us? I guess what I, I'm kind of curious. Like, why do you guys? Why do you guys feel so like creative? Like, why do you want to do it? Why do you want to produce content or 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 even be involved with it? I don't know, man. I think me and me and August actually had a conversation about how we just want to do like important, important things, stuff. yeah, and things that are notable, and we want to be interesting yeah. people, and and you yeah. know, and and to get super real, I think part of it comes from my mental illness. Uh, I have diagnosed, and not like one of those guys, people like Tumblr, <laughs> like twelve year olds on Tumblr, like I've got multiple personality disorder because they like <laughs> make skits or whatever, but um. Like I like I have anxiety and depression or whatever. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the anxiety comes from is that I'm not like good enough, you know? Like mm -hmm. I always wanna do more and that's like good that like I have that fire because of it, but it, it really sucks because it's like if I'm home for like thirty six hours and I don't like do something impressive, I like instantly hate myself. Yeah. But like there's something where that like anxiety is kind of a superpower. Like I know a lot of people some people with mental illness like don't like it how mental illness can be sometimes stigmatized stigmatized yeah. as superpower but like the fact that certain people certain people mental illness is a terrible thing that just ruins their lives I and mean, that's kind of de yeah. my depression like there's nothing good about my depression but i value my anxiety and it's part of me because i can just keep doing stuff and i'm like this is fun like yeah. when i have school projects and i'm totally stressed out and doing all sorts of things it's like my element and I have to work on being less just self-destructive when I'm there but that's what is like my best environment and that's why I want to do stuff and why I'm on this podcast and why I'm interested in politics and all this stuff is because why not do stuff like yeah. what's yeah. exciting about having a crappy job and just playing video games all the time like yeah. video games are cool but don't devote your life to something that isn't productive you want to be creating things in any way whether it's food media business yeah why let's build something don't die and have a net zero life yeah like i want to be remembered in one way or another like whether, whether it's for being a murderer or, <laughs> yeah. or yeah but for anything i just want to be not even be remembered like in the in the like traditional famous. sense it doesn't have to be in the traditional sense of even e of lady, even humans right? remembering but make an impact yeah. uh philip defranco a youtuber who's really cool and i admire him yeah. uh 
he he's used an analogy where everyone's droplets of water and everyone creates ripples yeah. on like the world and i just want to make a big enough ripple you know yeah. like everyone makes a ripple but why not make a big one yeah and i i just really want to every like I, I talked about this a lot on the solo podcasts i did with nick and i i when I, ever since I was like really like a little kid, like I always kind of had ideas, and I I just always like wanted. I always was inspired, and I was always a fan of con, you know, creations yeah. and movies and music and stuff. And I always wanted to like be like, hey, like I have my own versions of that kind of stuff. You know, I would listen to music and be like, hey, like it'd be cool if I could do this song, or I have this idea for a movie that I was inspired by from you know watching Power Rangers or whatever, and like now it's like i am at the point where i like actually know how to create stuff yeah and so i i just i want i, I want to share my ideas that basically and, and create my own entertain people and yeah share i guess that's kind of what it is for me sure that's cool cause i that's just, that's fun i don't think i've ever asked you guys that because that's pretty much exactly you know that's my those are my motivations yeah. i want to i want to share what i'm doing because i yeah. think it's cool and i want to be an example mm-hmm. to show people like hey you can do this yep and then i want to make waves yeah i want to mm-hmm. like i don't know i like the idea of of somebody knowing like nick hazelton it's yeah. the yeah. yak guy it's the guy yeah. from yeah. yak with nick you know the, yeah. whatever i don't care like, yeah mm-hmm. and that's, it's just cool yeah and i think that that's something that's interesting that i wonder how many people really realize that because like you talked about like yeah do you want to do you want to die and have uh, and have nothing to kind of point to? Oh, because like, that scares me, yeah. honestly. I, I mean, because I I dealt with depression. When I was a kid. Yeah, death anxiety is like huge. I knew a lot of people yeah, who died, also, young yeah. people, and it's like yeah. fuck. Like and I can also, die next year, and I gotta and, do something. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. even one of pressure. my inspirations for doing it as a kid, yeah. you know, and and you know, I'm a young. I'm still I'm 16, you know, so I'm trying to do it while I have the chance, you know, while I don't get screwed with yeah. from like the uh, the adult world the adulthood, you know? yeah and and even yeah. and even though i'm like descended from people who are who like are religious like i have like i'm ethnically jewish yeah, yeah but yeah. I, I don't say I'm, i say i'm ethnically religious i'm i'm ethnically jewish sorry because i celebrate the holidays with family i make lakas i'm part of the culture i know like i'm i am jewish but like in one sense of the word, but I'm, I'm not really very religious and that's sure. like death anxiety is huge. Like I try <laughs> to just like, I try to be like, um, optimistically, uh, there's a, it's like called optimistic nihilism where you just yeah. I was talking to Nash about this, like last night where not the night, the night before last night where it's just, if, if nothing matters, like just be happy. Yeah. But it's also like, if nothing matters, like, Oh my Why God, nothing you? matters. Right. Yeah. Like that's really scary, but it's also kind of freeing. And that's what I'm trying to, I try to remind myself that, that like, if there really is no purpose, let's yeah. just like make our purpose. Like, yeah, let's build a community. Let's have fun. Let's do cool things. Cause if you don't, you're just going to waste away. It's like, why not? That's, that's like Friedrich, Friedrich Nietzsche. That's, that's his thing is like, kind of like nihilist, nothing matters. Cause you can't prove it. But yeah, but guess what? That means you get to do it. Yeah. You that's get to that's the, the important meeting. part. You yeah. have to remember to say, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. It's int- like I maybe. I, geez, I think about the stories I should tell people, and you guys are like minors, so I probably. Okay. Uh, but but like, don't do this at home. But like, um, and I won't even say this has happened to me. But I know of uh, a guy who uh, who had uh, tried a, an eighth an eighth of an ounce of of psychedelic mushrooms yeah. and. Uh, bad trip and it was it literally was that kind of it was just a world of lack of meaning and like uh, deep dis- like that's that's a scary place and that, that's well, one thing don't, that, don't they call that ego death yes yeah. yeah where just everything is nothing means anything shout out to the internet's album called ego death go check it out sorry the internet that's with uh Sid. yep yep Off from Future. yeah Off Future. okay cool yeah. <laughs> so i know those folks and steve lacy and Lynn. yeah but i feel like that's what everyone should try to do whether they're whether they want to do drugs or not like whatever but like ego death like just kind of keep that in mind like well, i think it's important to recognize like they're don't hide from things don't yeah. hide from reality like guess what you're gonna die and don't yeah. be don't be uh, don't hide from that because you're scared because yeah. that's not like, gonna do anything and it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's okay. Get over it. You don't, oh, now you don't get to die because you're, you, you know, you're, you're hiding from it. it. It's like, yeah. no, you're going to die and you're just ignoring yeah. it. You have to just take it and yeah. do something with the moments. Yeah. 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 And that's, wow. that's kind of what sucks about being 16 or whatever. When you, when you have like these kinds of thoughts and mindsets, not to say that we're like 
I don't want to say we're smarter than a lot of people our <laughs> age. That's super yeah. like, but I mean, like we're thinking about things yeah. that are like most people think we're about ten years from now. Our time as teenagers, we're not. Yeah, sitting in, like, yeah but the problem, the problem is, the problem is we is we kind of we have to. We're wasting our time as teenagers to some extent because they have no choice. Like I, I well, only have so many per, actual personal freedoms. Like I can't. I don't have a car yet. Yeah. I don't have my driver's license yet even though i'm 16 because i suck yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I, but you don't you don't have to have a the, i mean i and i do everything out of my bedroom you know every album every video i make is made but in my bedroom yeah. there's like there's those things that keep us back but like i want to be like building a house right now like like yeah. i already want to have like my own property but it's like that costs so much money and i feel like i wish i wish that every kid when they turn 18 or whatever can just be given like a million dollars and then it's like like and just pay it back and somehow but yeah, yeah but it's it's so sad that everyone ha- gets money when they're 60 like right because if i if i could build if we had the money to build a like our houses and and build a garden that could feed ourselves you we would save so much money I and mean, you could yeah. retire at like 30 yeah but you can't because you have to immediately go into these uh, indoctrination these, camps. these these horrible loans that have huge uh, yeah. uh, interest rates to be able to buy you an apartment, and then and then and then, it's dude. like like most American teenagers when they graduate high school, it's all right. You're paying somebody to live in their place. You're yeah. paying somebody to go to their school. You're paying somebody to like eat. Like yeah. you're buying nothing. You consume is your own. Yeah, like, for most people, and that's yeah, like you, you, dangerous. Totally. Like, there are so many people in in America that if a lot, if even just one of our pillars of society, like, collapsed, like, if every grocery store closed, or if there's all these different things, that people would just fall apart. Like, there's people who are so reliant on the world that they would just fall apart, but the beauty of our community is that that wouldn't happen to us. Like, I've always... Yeah. We're in the best place for Cascadia. Right. Like, the Cascadia subduction zone is a thing for people who don't live on the West Coast. Where basically, any any moment now, there could be a, an earthquake that would, just wreck, that, would just wreck, that would just wreck the West Coast. Yeah. And it'd be like we couldn't go to school for, like, a year and a half, and yeah. the roads wouldn't work. But we live... most of us would probably die. Yeah, like, but, <laughs> but, yeah, most of us would probably die. But a lot of us know each other and uh, have... People are giving us weird looks. But a lot of us... Uh, just have, stare at them. <laughs> A lot of us have like emergency preparedness kits and axes, mm-hmm. and we all like everyone has pocket knives. Like I'm so metrosexual. Like I'm, I, but I still <laughs> you have ha- nose rings and, and I've got gauges, gauges just so people know. And, and I used to have like dyed hair mm-hmm. and whatever, but I've also got a pocket knife in my backpack and like flashlight, and I know how to like make a tent out of sticks and tarp yeah. and whatever. Yeah, and that's a lot of people here where it's no matter what they just know how to survive. Yeah. Wow, this is an interesting conversation. Um, yeah. But the Rick and Morty premiere is on pretty soon. And we got places yeah. to be for yeah. Rick and Morty to watch. Well, I, and the, here's my last final thought, and I'll let you guys give any concluding things. Okay. Um, it's really interesting to hear you guys talk about it because when I was younger, like I, I just didn't have other young people I felt like I could talk to about this. Like, and, and I. <laughs> And I, the things you yeah. say, like I know that that feeling, yeah. like you're talking about, like how you want to do all these things. Like I, you're still I pretty young, Nick. Ambition. I am, and you're I, like two years older than right? us. I only have two years on you guys. <laughs> but really. like, when I was your age, but it, like, but a lot has changed. I mean, yeah. like, you'll, you'll, I mean, I mean, you'll see it. Like, I believe it. Everything just gets. I don't. Know, you Different. start figuring out shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Things get. It goes up and down, up and down. And so far, that's all I can tell. Like I haven't figured it out, but I figured out a decent amount. Like, I don't know. That's just all I can say is it's just cool to see you guys, you know, get getting like not not even getting started, but like just you've already like you guys have already started. You're you're already at it and you're you're starting to like make things work. You're just mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just something really cool about that. And I think that that's where you're going to find success. If you are ambitious, if you really, really want it, you can have it. That's but that, that's the thing. That's the I think what makes the most sense to me is the, the people who are successful are the people who, who go for it. And if you don't, then that's how you're going to fail is if you give up. Heck yeah, bro. Yeah. So any concluding thoughts Tubular. on anything? 
Shout out to American Dream Pizza. Shout out to American and Dream Pizza. The Thank fantastic you. staff and the fantastic food. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the people sitting around us that are uh, being patient with us. Yeah. Annoying. <laughs> we're being pretty quiet. Yeah, yeah we're right. It, I think it's just people are get freaked out by microphones. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, like, I wonder, challenge to any of the listeners, how many car horns or, or like vehicle sounds have you heard? Yeah. We're in the middle of downtown and, and, Corvallis. And can you hear the music? Did the wind... Just really rip us apart and like tell us how many. Yeah, uh, is this the worst ca- podcast? And we'll and, and counter ums, <laughs> counter ums, and our likes. Just yeah. just tear us apart, please. <laughs> Ro- hashtag roast yakin with Nick. Yeah, <laughs> roast yak- <laughs> Yeah, would, roast yeah. us in the comments, uh, but please do it c- with constructive criticism. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's we've had a fun time. Yeah. We'll we'll probably do this again. Oh if yeah, you, if you guys don't hate too. us, and even, even if you do hate us, yeah, we'll yeah, still yeah, do it. We'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for joining me, guys. Yeah. And. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. See Adios. Ya.